Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie, I am the introverted reader and today's video is going to be another installment of a series of videos that I've been doing on this channel where I take a favorite author of mine and I look back at some of their books that I haven't read yet, I read them and then I, you know, talk about them in a video. I've done it twice before. Um, I will try and leave uh, the other two linked down below. I've done one for TJ Klune and I've done, the very first one I did was for Alice Oseman. So yes, <laughs> now this next one is one, um, our books from an author that I adore so much. She's amazing. She's such a great writer. She's so many books, honestly. I, <laughs> um, she's so many books. Like I really do want to try and read them all. But before we do any of that, we're gonna hydrate first, okay? And if you have yet to hydrate today, please do so. Uh, anyway, I'll leave that open because Lord knows I'll need it. Anyway, are you ready to find out what author it was? It was, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, Juno Dawson. <laughs> it was Juno Dawson. These are Juno Dawson's books. We have Wonderland, we have Stay Another Day, and we have Clean. Um, I listened to these two um, via audiobook and I read this one physically because it's the shortest of the three and I had other books I needed to pri I needed to get read this month as well so and actually July is actually Juno Dawson's birthday month so it was fitting so anyway I read this one first and I will say right off the bat, like before I get into each one, all three of these deal with uh, quite very deep and serious, uh, probably triggering topics. And at the beginning of every one, like at the beginning of this one, um, Juno has put a little uh, disclaimer, trigger warning, it says Wonderland is a work of fiction but deals with many real life issues, including mental health, self-harm, sexual assault, and drug use. And she also has uh, resources listed at the back. So, so there's like a little support page of a whole bunch of different resources and stuff um, that you can look up and look into should you feel the need. And it's the same for the other two as well. Now, plot wise, this one. <laughs> This one is about our girl, Alice, and just fair warning, it's very on the nose with the Alice of Wonderland references, okay? What is going on with my hair? What is happening? Anyway, so um, it's about our girl, Alice, and she is, whew, she is going through some stuff. She has been through a lot mentally and you know she she's on a lot of medication for that she goes to therapy for it but her story really starts when um she spends the night with this girl called bunny um yes like <laughs> hands were held okay and anyway she wakes up the next morning and bunny's gone it's like where is she at and there's just a note like left behind like oh sorry I had to leave like I had to go whatever and Alice doesn't know where she is what happened to her she can't get in touch with her and everybody at her school right like she goes to this really prestigious like prep school with like all these nepo babies like Alice isn't a nepo baby like her mom worked for her money but all these other kids have never you know they're all nepo babies um but anyway all the other kids at her school are just like listen girl Bunny disappears all the time, like she'll be back, it's fine. Like she does disappearing acts literally all the time. And like, she's probably like just chilling on an island somewhere for a few days and then she'll appear, it's what she does. But Alice doesn't believe that. Alice is like, nah, something is wrong. I need to find out what happened to her. Like, what if she's dead? What if she's, you know, what if something happened to her, right? And she uh, sort of takes it on herself to find out what happened um so and she goes to bunny's locker and she finds inside bunny's locker a playing card <laughs> with the queen of hearts on it that i say it's very on the nose of the references but anyway so she finds the playing card and bunny's locker that said what it says wonderland on it and a date and she's all like that date is like two days from now 
So she des Alice decides to find out what Wonderland is, find out what it's about, like what's going on. And hopefully she's thinking, once I get there, I'll find Bunny or I'll find out what happened to Bunny. Um, oh, Alice is trans as well. And her family and like therapists and that obviously know about it because obviously she had to tell her therapist she was trans, like, and obviously like doctors and that too. Um, but she's not like out out yet at her school. Like obviously everybody calls her Alice. Nobody really knew her previously, you know, whatever. Everyone thinks she's a bit weird, but she kind of like keeps that to herself as right she should. She doesn't have to tell everybody. But anyway, um, I mentioned it because it comes into play later on. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, she, she, she ends up going to Neverland, spends over a thousand pounds, um, to get a ticket to go to this party because that's what Wonderland is. It's like this really exclusive party that all these rich kids go to to do only goodness knows what. And she gets there and then that is when things went off the rails. <laughs> that is when things go off the rails. It but See, if I'm being honest, Alice in Wonderland, like the original story um, by Lewis Carroll is not my favorite like children's story anyway. Mostly because it just doesn't make any sense. And I'm not the type of gal that likes to read stories that don't make a whole lot of sense. I need to know what's going on. Like I can't just, sometimes I can, you know, there's maybe some books I've read in the past that are all just vibes, don't really make that much sense, which is fine. But there are times when it's just so like, you know, like she she's taking drugs, she's seeing things, you know, like, and like I said, there's a whole bunch of trigger warnings to go with this, but I just felt like I was spiraling. And in the end, I gave this book two stars because it just, I didn't enjoy my time reading it. If I'm being honest, I did not enjoy it. I, <laughs> I honestly very nearly canceled this whole video because of this book, because I didn't like it. Um, but anyway, you know, it was what it was. And if you've read this and you love it, well, although I did see somebody on Goodreads say this felt like fan fiction written by a 13 year old. So bit harsh. But anyway, I've gone on about this book enough. In the end, I didn't enjoy my time reading it. It was a two star. And then these two. OK, so we've got Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson, obviously, <laughs> who are we talking about? Um stay another day right so this is a story set around christmas time it's set around christmas time but i would not say this if you're looking for a cozy christmas read this is not it in my humble opinion anyway like it's mentioned like they're getting they're getting ready they're making the food they're watching the movies but I wasn't getting cozy Christmas vibes from this book. If you read it and you did, more power to you, but it wasn't for me. Uh, but anyway, so we're following this family, the McAllisters, and they are all joining each other for a family Christmas for the first time in over a year because it they've got three kids and two of them were away. One of them was away in France for a year and the other one, I think she was just, she just didn't come home. Like she only lives in London. Like the family lives in Edinburgh and she lives down in London. But I guess she just wasn't able to make the time to go and see her mom and dad at Christmas. So three siblings, Fern, Rowan and Willow. Um, obviously Fern and Rowan live away from home. They're 19. Um, but Willow is 17. She still lives at home. So anyway, they all arrive and they're all like greeting each other, blah, blah, whatever. And we find out that Willow, the youngest, is dealing with an eating disorder. And uh, like I said, trigger warnings as well. There's another little, eh. There's an author's note at the front. Uh, this book is a work of fiction, but includes subject matter some readers may find triggering conversations about eating disorders and self-harm and again she has included resources for support at the back so anyway so willow is dealing with an eating disorder she had to go away to a clinic i guess or whatever you call those places that people go to to get help for eating disorders i'm guessing it's a clinic or a recovery center or something like that um she was away and you know she's come back and everybody i feel so bad for this kid like you know, she, 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 oh, like the amount of times they tried to like force this kid to eat. I was like, can you not? Um, and like, 
there was a like she was so angry and just so bitter all the time and like whilst on the one hand it's just you know like I, I hate reading from characters that are this way but I don't blame her now like I, like when I was reading it I was like girl like can you just <laughs> like she annoyed me a little bit but I realize now I was being too harsh and it's just like give the kid a break honestly um but anyway and uh this whole family is, apart from Willow, like I, I want to take Willow away from these people, but honestly, they're just, they're the kind of family that whenever something bad is going on, they ignore it and put Christmas lights over it quite literally and pretend that it's not there, which is what they do with Willow's eating disorder all the way through this. Um, so anyway, the other two, Fern, um is the older sister she's coming around with her boyfriend tom and she's all excited about christmas she loves christmas she's looking for everything to be perfect and just so and if it's not so she throws a fit she throws a fit numerous times she got on my last nerve um and because get this right her boyfriend told her that he was bi and she broke up with him i know I know, let that sink in, let that sink in. And there's literally a section where she's like, I'm not homophobic. Like I marched on parliament for trans rights. Like I've checked my privilege. And I was like, well, did you check it when you dumped your boyfriend over being bi? Did you? No, I don't think you did. Um, and then there's Rowan, who is Fern's twin, twin brother. And he is very openly gay. He's coming over with his friend, Sid, who is non-binary. We love to see that rep. And he, Sid doesn't really play a big part in this. Like they're just, they're just there, honestly. Um, but, but Rowan just wants to go out partying and be fabulous and be gay and just be like, woo! Like he doesn't really care about anything other than having a good time. And anytime anything gets serious, he just kind of like he, he, again, they brush it under the rug and pretend it's not there. Um, yeah, if I'm being honest, if it wasn't Wonderland that tempted me into not doing this video at all, it was this one because I I remember getting a little over halfway through and just being like, I hate all these people. <laughs> I don't like any of these people. I mean, the last few chapters, I guess, were okay. And like, I understand, you know, why they were the way they were. They had a lot going on. And whenever they actually started talking about what was happening and what they were all feeling, it finally got a bit better. Fern still got on my last nerve. I do not like her. I do not like her at all. She annoyed the hell out of me. Um, Like if her name wasn't Fern, I'd be calling her Karen, honestly. <laughs> like, did not like her. Um, Yeah, and uh, it says, you know, um, four sleep still Christmas, three secretive siblings, two hot house guests, two hot house guests, and one juicy secret. First of all, your juicy secret was revealed way too soon. <laughs> and it wasn't even that juicy, if I'm being honest. It was a little bit, but I, I like, I remember whenever it was revealed, I was like, oh, okay. But then I was like, wait, is that it? That was the whole build up to the whole thing like that. That was the big reveal. You know, I was just like, I was kind of hoping one of them killed somebody. If I'm being honest, like I was just like, can, is this like a thriller set around Christmas time? But it's not, it's not. And yeah, I mean, like I said, the last few chapters were okay, but all in all, I gave this like a low three star and I know you're probably watching this video right now being like, wow, why you, you really weren't enjoying your time. That's really sad. But then I read this. <laughs> oh, it's, it's reflective. You can probably see yourself. There you are. That's you. I think that's the camera. Um, and then I read clean, um, which is actually my favorite out of all three that I listened to. Um, although the, I swear, like whenever I was listening to the audiobook for this, I swear I could hear the person that was reading it flipping the pages. You know, I could hear paper rustling, <laughs> like she would stop, flip the page and then go read and then she'd stop, flip the, like, are you, you're either making really annoying my signs or you're flipping paper, but I'm going to go with turning the paper. 
But anyway, she did make my sounds on the occasion, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, I read this and I actually really, really liked it. This is my favorite out of the three. So this one is about our uh, main girl, Lexi Volkoff, and she is a Nepo baby. <laughs> she, her father owns a string of hotels. She's been, you know, she, she's rich, she's rich, you know, like, um, but she gets in with the wrong crowd. She starts seeing this guy and then she starts doing drugs, like real, like really, really bad drugs. And she very almost overdoses. Her brother finds her in the hotel room. She's passed out. He thinks that she's dead. But then when he finds out she's alive, he brings her to this um, sort of facility that's set out on this island in the middle of nowhere. And he basically br drags her out there and is like, you have a problem. You need to get your mess together. You're staying here and I'm going to come and get you in like 70 days. Like you need to get clean. Hence the title. So, and again, an author's note. Um... Clean is a work of fiction, but it deals with many real sensitive subjects, including mental health, eating disorders, self-harm and addiction. And I believe for this book, Juno got, um, she uh, was inspired by stories that she was told by actual people that deal with the actual things that Lexi and some of the other kids in this are going through. Like she mentions it in her acknowledgments, she said, thank you to the people who anonymously spoke to me about their experiences of addiction, recovery and sobriety. So yeah, and again, there's different resources that she's put at the back if you should wish to look into it. So anyway, so our girl Lexi has to stay on this island for like 70 days and you know, she's going through the therapy and she's working on getting clean and, and all that. And I definitely, like I said, this is definitely my favorite out of all three. I definitely, like, I mean, at first, obviously, I didn't really like Lexi a whole lot, but then you get to know her as this book goes on, and you find out that underneath it all, she's just this really scared, lonely kid who didn't really have anybody else to turn to other than her, other than the people that were around her that were doing the drugs, that were, you know... Um, you know, it, this book, it talks about addiction, staying sober, you know, and, and relapsing and, you know, there's a whole bunch of different other people in the facility with her. There's a trans girl who's dealing with an eating disorder. There's a guy with OCD. There's, um, a bigger girl who is overweight, you know, so it's just... I, I really enjoyed my time reading this and it says on the front gossip girl goes to rehab and I don't like gossip girl I'll be honest but you know I understood the reference and I definitely definitely thought this was a really great book again my favorite out of all three um this would go first and then stay another day and then wonderland would be at the bottom although one thing I'll say about this the romance in this I wasn't too sure about I kind of was just like you know it's just like she's there and he's there too like she starts something up with one of the guys that she's in the rehab with and I'm like okay I guess you know um whatever I wasn't really feeling it if I'm being honest um I thought it was a bit insta lovey but that's just me but overall apart from that I did think this was a really beautiful story about this girl you know getting ahead of her problem and, you know, it talks about her, you know, like the very beginning part when she first enters the facility and her going through the withdrawals, not being on the stuff anymore was really just, you know, like tread with caution, especially. I mean, the other two, I would say, yes, tread with caution, but this one, most of all, out of all three. So anyway... That was my experience reading some Juno Dawson books that I've never read before. Um, it didn't start off great, but it ended well. And I'm super, super glad that I read all three of these because they've been sitting on my shelf for a really long time. And I, um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad I did it. You know, it's been a while coming. I definitely meant to do this video a lot sooner. But yeah, has any of you read any of these? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know 
in the comments and I definitely will be doing another one of these videos very soon. <laughs> I'll try and leave the other two. I mean, I might actually try and put them all into a playlist and maybe link the playlist down below if I can remember to do that. But anyway, I hope you're all having a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video. All my socials are down below as always, my Twitter, my Instagram and my TikTok. Subscribe if you are new, please. I would love to get to 300 subscribers. That would be amazing. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching this. I love you all. Bye.